Okay, so today we're going to talk about relationships that drain and how to change that. Um, as always, you are my mission, empaths are my mission, and my path is through Christ. So, uh, this is something that um, I had to address uh, very early on in my journey as an empath. So, we're going to talk about um, kind of answering the question, do you have any relationships in your life that drain you? Um, so... First, I'm going to say, I want to mention where I, get, I got this information from. This is a really great book, After the Empath Survival Guide by Julie, Judith Orloff. I would suggest doing this. It's a workbook. It's got like questions and stuff like that. So I'm going to be using her analogy of a hook and a cord. And we're, don't worry, we'll, we'll get through it. Um, but so um, once you accept kind of the journey of being an empath and recognize a lot of the emotional um, residue or the emotional stress or the negativity that we have is kind of like our own doing, right? There are certain things that we can manipulate that our perception or change our perception in the world to be more positive, to be healthier, right? So once the empath um, is accepting of, of who they are and noticing that, you know, I'm not necessarily positive <laughs> most of the time and that affects me negatively. Um, so it's kind of acknowledgement and observation of who you are and your sensitivity, right? Now everyone, it's not gonna help anyone to be negative or toxic, but especially for the empath, you are very sensitive. It's like your borders kind of extend a little bit outside of you. So not only are you dealing with or addressing your own pain or emotional pain, uh, you're also feeling the emotional pain of other people, right? So, um, you start to notice like, okay, there are things that I can do that kind of uh, center me, that, um, you know, protect me, that um, keep me encouraged. So after you notice that and it's self-awareness, then the next step is observing interactions that you have with people um, and noticing where there is some unhealthiness or there someone is draining energy from you. Um, and in the relationships that are very positive that you see joy and you get fed from so that's just kind of a net was a natural step for me in my journey is first kind of addressing you know what is me being an empath what is uh, you know the negativity what is the pain that I'm holding on to the emotional state and then it's like looking out and saying okay the connections that I have right because the thing is is that this is a natural part of once you kind of um, find out something new or something that's really worked for you, you want to spread it around your circle, your friends, right? Because um, the journey is not as fun if you're doing it alone. <laughs> anyway, so you start to notice positive and negative energy. Like some people you talk to, you're encouraged, and other people you talk to, you feel like you need a nap, right? So this is how your sensitivity is easily kind of altered by the emotional states of others, which is why your friend circle is very important as an empath. Now, I, I always talk about a circle where I have an inner circle of two or three friends that I know are, we would call them ride or die, right? So if, if my friend called me crying, I'd be like, where are you at? Where are you at, right? So there, I only have a couple friends, and then there are other friends or other people that I would consider associates or colleagues that are outside of that circle. Now, the, 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 the borders are not, you know, permanent, right? So there might be some people coming in and out of the circle, temporary or permanent, so it's always open. It's not like I'm saying, hey, this is my crew crew forever, right? It's not a game. So <laughs> anyway... In, in, in the book that she talks about this visualization that I want you guys, uh, that really helped me at least, when addressing, um, seeing relationships that were taking more than they were giving, right? That I felt more drained than I felt encouraged, and you want to be encouraged, right? Iron sharpens iron. So, um, what's her name? Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie Jameson uh, mentions this, this idea of a hook and a cord. So... 
chords, whenever we meet someone, we create a chord, right? Now, I might just be like, hey, how's your day? And then the chord is break, broken, right? We don't see, but we're connecting to human beings on a daily basis. And there are some people who you're going to have long-term chords with. And a chord is just an energy connection between two people, right? And in a friendship, that energy ex exchange is to be equal, now, keep in mind, okay, I'm, I'm not giving advice on marriage, right? Uh, there's a different, there's a covenant when it comes to marriage. But a lot of times, as we treat friendships like marriages, strangely, and marriages like friendship, right? Uh, but so, so, you know, friendships, they don't have to be permanent. No one says you're always going to be someone's friend, right? It's not like a commitment for life. Um, but, but, but relate, you know, marriages uh, ideally would be so. So anyway... <clears throat> um, it's, it, they're in this, I want you to think about kind of like an umbilical cord um, where, you know, each of you are kind of feeding off each other. And then especially when you meet someone who is just kind of like your twin twin, that you just, you, you guys are feeling each other, you guys are working together. You know, it feels like you hype each other up where, you know, <laughs> you know both of us quote the scripture, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, so that's the cord, right? It's very, it's a healthy flow of energy it's a healthy flow of connection it's positivity you know sometimes it's, it's sometimes just sitting and listening sometimes it's being there you know like uh, being the person that uh is on their side now I might and later i might be like you know you was wrong but you know i'm gonna listen to you <laughs> in the perspective so anyway uh, now we're moving into hooks now hooks are negative connections right there are if i if i'm going to tell you how it feels for me and hook is like literally there's a hook in my heart and the person every time they they are doing so a negative behavior or encouraging fear encouraging you know animosity um it feels like they're literally taking from me they're just they're causing me so much pain right they're pulling on that instead of a cord there's, there's no pull right there's just you know movement of energy this one is just taking and, and hurting right so um, they take energy away and do not replace it or they change it to negative so <laughs> this is where you have um Whenever you talk to somebody and you're like, hey, how you doing? They're like, my life is awful. And you're like, ugh, you know, I don't want to do this with you. you know? Also, be aware if you're that person too, because sometimes it's me, I'm like, eh, you know. Um, but anyway, um, that, so and they also, so they might either just take energy from you, like they're just kind of an a empty well. Um, and that's, that's the, how I see a lot of when it comes to narcissists or when it comes to somebody who's just based in anxiety and fear doesn't want out of it. No matter how much you, energy you put into that person, you're never going to feel them. What, what they need is Jesus, right? They need God. I, I, you know, why would I take so much energy from me on a constant basis um, when God loves me and he wants me to be full of power, right? Your cup overflow. If you give your overflow, they're taking more of you than, than is allowed, right? They're actually, what they're doing is kind of reaching into your boundaries of self, you know, worth. So, and pulling away from that. <laughs> anyway, so there are kind of three ways that people can do it. Of course, number one is verbal or communication. You'll talk to someone and they'll stay on the phone with you for hours and hours and energy-wise, they're being negative, just blah, 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 blah. I call this like dumping um, as opposed to kind of like communing with someone. There, there's, a, there's a difference between someone just wanting to vent, which kind of feels like it's going up and like, ooh, girl, that was awful. Or someone who wants to dump and just give you their, their pain, right? And say, wallow in it with me. Um, so, anyway, um, what we're talking, okay, so verbally, the second way is emotionally or psychologically, right? Someone who is always negative, someone who seeks to put you down, um, someone who sees nothing good in what you do, um, or someone who's discouraging. I, I have, I've heard uh, multiple empaths tell me that they're in contact with friends or they've had loved ones to say, you know, I just want to break you. Or, uh, you know, you really think that your voice is for that? Or, you know, just extremely discouraging. And I've had it within myself where, where the narcissist wants to dominate, right? Or oppress. Um, so, um, anyway, I diverged. <laughs> digress. Anyway, so the verbally first. The second one is emotionally, psychologically. If they're pulling from you emotionally, they're hurting you for no apparent reason, saying nasty things to you. Psychological warfare, whether it's, you know, gaslighting or... Um, 
you know, microaggressions, whenever it's dealing with this type of thing, you might say, they might say, oh, I didn't mean anything by it, ha, 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 or use sarcasm. Um, if it hurt you, it hurt you. So it's your, your emotions are just as valid or are more valid to you, right? Your emotions should always be more valuable to you than the emotions of other people. Now, that doesn't mean, because <laughs> that's the thing about trusting your discernment, right? That doesn't mean you hurt people's feelings, but if you're not concerned about who, you know, your state, and they're not concerned about who <laughs> their state or your state, then who's concerned? No one, right? So take care of your emotional state. And if someone hurt your feelings, just say they hurt your feelings. So anyway, and then physical, or I would say energy-wise. So if somebody's always in your pocket, right? If you go to dinner with someone and they always pat, you know, pat their head, stop inviting them to dinner. They're, if if their company is not worth it. Now, sometimes your company is worth it. Like, I love inviting people over my house, and I love cooking. I don't mind the money I spend just because their company is payment for me. So, you know, it, it just depends on the relationship. Right. Or energy wise, you always putting in work and, and when you're helping that person, it doesn't feel like it's a gift of service of the gift of service, like showing love as a, you know, um, I can't remember what it's called now, but, but expressing your, your ways of love language. That's what it is. Thank you. Expressing um, your love language. Um, it's, it just feels like obligation. If it feels like obligation, then it's not right. Right. God looks at your internal motivation. Your internal motivation matters. I've had t plenty of times where friends will say, hey, Amber, you want to go do this? And I'll, they'll be I'll be like, no, 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 thanks. Thank you, though. And they'll be like, why? And I'll be, because I don't want to. So I should, and my friends are like, oh, OK, Amber doesn't want to. OK, bye. Like, so it's totally fine with my in the relationships that I have. And it should be fine for you to assert your truth to your friends. Because really, there's no point if you don't have authenticity, right? They don't really love you if they love an image of you and not who you truly are. Amen. Okay. So anyway, uh, physically, like, you know, in your pocket or, you know, taking stuff. I don't have any friends like this. But, <laughs> but also, like, energy-wise, right? Doing acts of service or just a lot of attention. They just feel very needy. Um, okay. So... Understanding that we can all be these type of people, right? We're all human, <laughs> so it's not like the empath is any different. I know sometimes I wake up in the morning grumpy. If my husband gets up at the same time before I have my devotion and my prayer, I might be a dragon. <laughs> so I do the same thing. <laughs> I need support in prayer, guys. I can't just be up and talking, or right? I need my coffee. Okay, so now we're going to move into the um what it feels like or what's lo a love-based uh relationship versus a fear or kind of a negative based relationship so i love this list she provides um i'm on page 40 64 but i mean i don't know what version you have so we're gonna do i'm gonna read all the love and then i'm gonna read the fear and then we're gonna go into some tips right because you know i like giving tips okay so um she says um, love-based relationships, unconditional love and acceptance. Partners are able to communicate about past issues and forgive each other. Both parties trust each other and allow for other types of relationships, right? If your partner is selfish or your friend get jealous, like that's crazy, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I give my husband attention, but like we, I need other relationships outside of my relationship with my husband, right? Um, both parties support each other and empower each other to be the best version of themselves. They're not trying to hold you down. Partners do not manipulate, control, or act with hostility towards each other. I'm very <laughs> against manipulation, so I kind of call a spade a spade. I'm like, no, you're not going to get me to do it by making me feel guilty because I don't feel guilty, right? <laughs> Partners openly show their love and emotions. Like there's sometimes where I'm like, oh, I love you. I, one of my friends, um, I'm like, I love you. I love you too. Like <laughs> we're, we're weird like that. Um, I, okay, so par uh, partners can set and respect each other's boundaries. My friends know after like 10 o'clock, I'm not going to respond to your texts. Okay, I sleep early. I'm like an old lady. <laughs> I enjoy sleeping, so after 10 o'clock, I might not answer. There will be some days that I will answer, so I say, keep me in the text. It's going to be on silent, right? Um, relationship is based on choice, respect, and communication. Um, 
health and heart-based sexual, oh, sorry, <laughs> physical relationships intimacy uh, is if applicable, right? Obviously, when you're married, right? But health or heart-based, um, like, relationship, healthy, sorry, healthy, heart-based physical relationship. Okay, so <laughs> I don't have a problem talking about it. It's just scary because I, I forgot that word was there. <laughs> okay, so fear-based relationships. At least one partner acts controlling towards the other. At least one partner holds on to anger, cannot forgive the other for past mistakes. At least one partner exhibits jealousy, difficulty feeling fulfilled or acting to full capacity. Like you just feel empty around this person or they just feel you have, you have a difficulty feeling fulfilled or acting to fulfill capa full, capa full capacity. Cannot act authentically without upsetting or triggering the other. If I am being authentic with you and it makes you angry, and really, I mean, I'm very sensitive, right? We're sensitive to other people's emotions. But if I've said something that I wouldn't even know triggered you, I'm not really going to apologize if it's something like delusional, right? I'll be like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's not normal. There's truth and there's delusion, right? So I'm not going to ever feed your delusional state. Um... At least one partner behaves passively aggressively to the other. I don't deal with passive aggressive people. I'd rather you be aggressive. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to be passive aggressive, I'll probably respond um, with some truth, right? Um, at least one partner causes the other suffers from mental or physical abuse. That should be very obvious. It's been, and um, just to say that uh, mental abuse also includes neglect. You know, you know, not paying attention to the person, ignoring the person. Um, at least uh, a relationship is sustained by a sense of need, not respect. And I've had to work on these, this with my husband, right, and, and some codependency issues that we do, we, we work on, right? Uh, sometimes we need to be separate in order to refill ourselves and then come together to, to be full of energy, right? And then, uh, obviously, unhealthy physical relationship, if, if applicable. Okay, so that, I just thought it was an interesting list, so, um, you know, take, take it as you will. And as, as always, when you're reading these type of books, use your own discernment, and your first book uh, is always the Bible. So, um, now we're going to go into some tips, because you know uh, uh, I love some tips. Okay, so first, you're going to ask yourself, and this is what I do, <clears throat> is the relationship worth saving? Um, it's not, a, a, like I said, it's not a covenant, right? You got, I mean, unless you guys cut yourself and blood brothers, I don't know what you did, but still, even if you did, like, <laughs> it's just, you know, things change. So anyway, if it's no, um, or I want, I want to, when, it, when I'm saying this, I want you to understand or think about the symbiosis of two different species, right? We're all one body of Christ, but, you know, we all work together, right? Arms, heads, all that stuff. So... And when you think about like a reef and, um, you know, the, the, when the large creatures like the stingrays, the rays float over and they kind of hover over and then there's these little fish that come and they eat all the parasites off the, the, the majestic creature and the majestic creature gets cleaned, right? There's, there's a benefit as opposed to. One of the, I saw a documentary, I, I'm sure this is gross, but anyway, there was a, there's a parasite that kind of attaches to like the shark's eye and kind of makes them blind <laughs> as opposed to that, right? You don't want someone like attaching to your eye or, you know, uh, you know, a leech that's on you or, you know, you don't leave ticks on you when you see him. So you don't want someone who is just continually sleep paras parasitic. So seeing, you know, not being negative, but seeing the relationship as it is. Am I giving more than I'm receiving from this person? Is this, and if I'm giving it, then why am I giving it? Now, is the person taking is different, right? Because you can just stop doing it, what, what the behavior is. But the, if the person continues to take it, right, that means it's parasitic. It's a hook, right? <laughs> anyway. Okay, so if it's no... Cut the tie, guys. I mean, really, y you can tell them why you're cutting the tie and see if you can, you know, work it out, which I believe in communication. But if the relationship is not worth saving, don't waste your time because I guarantee you there will likely be more people in your lives to come, right? So anyway, 
Um, if, but most of the time it's going to be yes, right? So I don't encourage you to just start cut, 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 cutting your cords, right? Kind of address each one and see how you feel afterwards. Because you could always come back, right? Just say, you know, I'm not at this time. I can't really, you know, I'm trying to focus on myself, right? It doesn't have to be like a permanent breakup. Um, anyway, uh, if the answer is yes, I say communicate, communicate, communicate. Reinforce whatever the communication was. And then evaluate, you know, if it's been fixed. So I'm going to give you um, an example. I hope, my, I hope my girlfriend won't mind. But, okay, so I'm, one of my spiritual gifts is encouragement. So I really can just give, give, give because it comes from God. So, you know, like, it doesn't bother me. But then I noticed that when every time I kind of gave encouragement, I would get back kind of negativity where she would say mean things about herself. Not about me, right? But still, when you hurt yourself, you hurt me when you're my friend, right? I feel your pain. And you can... Um, you know, I, I, there was this quote that said that, with, especially with sarcasm, which I used to be prone to myself, is that your brain doesn't know the difference, right? Or when you're when you're saying mean things about yourself, you're saying it to that child version of you, right? Your spirit is still the same. You're a child of God, right? So, anyway, I, I just had a talk with her, and I said, every time you say something bad about yourself, I'm going to send you the poop emoji. And so sometimes I do humor with it because this friendship was worth it, right? We've been friends for a long time. We, when we're together, it's kind of like we just laugh and we'll laugh until we cry, roll over on the floor. And then after, so I communicated that with her and then I reinforced it. So every time she says something negative, I would send the poop emoji and then she'd be like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and so it reinforced it and I haven't sent, sent any poop emojis for like a year. Right. Um, but then also evaluate, okay, did that work? You know, and I'm like, okay, so, but I want you to keep this in mind, though, because a lot of people say, oh, well, you're asking the person to change who they are. Sorry, I brought, dropped the remote. Um, you aren't. You aren't asking the person to change who you, who they are. You're asking the person to change a specific behavior around you. Now, if she wanted to um, keep talking bad about her to other people, she could, right? Um, but you also, she will also see that um, there's a difference in the nature of our relationship that is more positive when she remains positive. So this might be a good effect for her later on, right? Anyway, and even if it's not, it doesn't matter as long as they're not, <laughs> I don't, I'm not like influenced. So I'm, I'm putting the border like it stops with me, right? I like the, my rights in where yours begin, you know? Um, so it's, it's that type of thing. Anyway, so you're asking them to change specific behavior. And I've had people say, well, I'm going to be me, and you can't stop who I am. And I'm like, okay, but you're not going to be you around me. So then I just remove myself. <laughs> okay, so I, I like to think about it. And I, um, I lived in a couple of different countries. And there was I was one really good friend named June. And um, we were talking, he's Korean, and we were talking. And I was like, you know, June, you only like to be my friend because, you know, you can practice English around me. And he said, yes, and you want to be, you like to be my friend because I'll show you around, I show you around Korea. And I was like, yeah. So I, I, it just shifted my thinking and not, not that I don't love June, right? But it's also, you think of the relationship as a social contract. Not like a, you know, you checking off things and bylaws, but look at the nature of the relationship. And it's an opportunity to be a little bit objective about the relationship. Who does what? Uh, how much work or effort are you putting in as opposed to the other person? How much positive energy are you giving as opposed to how much positive energy are you receiving? So uh, he made me realize that relationships are supposed to be mutually beneficial, right? It's symbiosis, not parasitic. Um, <laughs> so I have friends who we don't talk for years, right? Whenever they come in the country or I go, you know, to Europe or something, we see each other then. I have friends who um, I never call. They only call me. But it's because, you know, she is a doctor, right? And I know that when she's available, she'll call me. And I'm fine with that, right? I have extrovert friends. Oh, no, I actually don't have any extrovert friends. I have, I have mostly introvert friends. And I'm a bit of an ambivert. I, like, I, I like being social. You know, I enjoy the social, but it's, it, um, whenever there's something negative, it easily pulls, the, the, the group energy easily pulls from me, right? But I also like attention, a little bit of an audience when I'm telling a story. So, anyway, my introvert friends, um, 
they might be uncomfortable with me calling them, right? If I call them and they don't answer the phone, I'll, I say, oh, they might call me back in a couple of days. And I'm unbothered by it because that's the nature <laughs> of who they are. You know, if you say, you know, oh, I got too many extrovert friends, find some introvert friends, but y'all going to have difficulty talking. <laughs> I'm just joking. You have plenty of things in common. Okay. So anyway, see the person for who they are and who you are, right? If, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a turtle, you know, keeping it slow, a sea turtle, and having the other person be a shark. I mean, as long as they're not eating you, right? It's just, <laughs> this is a poor example. A turtle and like a, a whale, right? <laughs> okay. That's better. Um, anyway, so um, the second, the next tip is, Sometimes it's about changing your behavior too and being consistent, right? I kept sending that poop emoji. I'd be like, ooh, this didn't make me feel good, poop emoji. Ooh, this didn't make me feel good, poop emoji. If the person loves you, they'll respect you, your boundaries enough to at least change the behavior around you. And that's the point. If they don't love you enough to change the behavior that's causing you pain, then should they be friends? Are you guys friends? Okay. Um, this is a very simple tip, but I'm, it's it, be around people you like, people who are interesting, people who make you feel good. Um, this is very simple. I don't invite anyone to my house to our parties because I, I love being social. COVID is you know broken that up. But anyway, we I, we have these huge parties where I'll make a bunch of food. We'll have a theme like I'll do Korean night or we'll have international night. People will come over. They might bring potluck or I just cook. You know, I throw down y'all. I'm just saying, if you got the chance to come over, come on over. It's delicious. But anyway, so I enjoy that part. But I don't invite anyone to my house that I don't like. Right. Um, if I don't like you, you stop getting an invite. Just like when, for instance, if when I have a friend, if um, I keep inviting them to stuff and then they don't want, they keep like canceling. I understand if they have a reason, but then I'll just stop inviting them, right? And it's not, they can call me and be like, hey, I want one of those invitations again. I'll be like, okay, I stopped giving these because you stopped coming or you didn't come. So it's, it's not like it's a cancel. It's a stop putting forth the energy if they're not interested in being social. And I suffer from depression. So sometimes I just don't feel like doing anything. Now, generally speaking, I tell my friends about my depression and I talk openly about it. So I don't have any problem saying, you know, the world's going to end and <laughs> crying to them and then laughing and telling a joke five minutes later because, you know, my emotions change at the, you know, the drop of a dime, drop of a hat, whatever. Okay, so be around people you like. Um, the next one is find friend or, or f f Know the difference between a friend, like I said, in the inner circle of people that you would confide in, that you trust, the ride or dies, and the people who are just associates, right? I'm not going to call you up and, like, you were going to hang out or we wouldn't, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So just know the difference because I've had this, this conversation with my, my girlfriend and she was like, oh, you know, um, this other girl was our friend. And I was like, she was not my friend. <laughs> Like, she ought to be your friend, but she was not my friend. She's like, oh, that's mean. And I'm like, no, it's not mean. It's just the truth. I trust you. And I only, you know, my friends are people who I trust, right? Anyway, know the difference between that. Also, temporary and permanent. Like, I got the ability when traveling abroad to kind of choose my friends and the ones that I kept. Because I would move to another country and I would say, oh, these are the ones I want to keep and these are the ones I don't want. So, it was really convenient. It was more difficult coming back home and cutting those ties, right? Those unhealthy uh, hooks. But I did, right? <laughs> Um, and then the last tip is going to be obviously a Christian tip. Now I've done this with, especially in my relationship with my husband, but also when it comes to friends. So, um, you guys, I'm, ooh, I shouldn't turn it, uh, but okay. We're in first Corinthians 13, four. Okay. So you guys know this verse, but I like to put it. Okay. Instead of love. I'll put the person's name. Now, of course, no one's going to have all these traits unless they're Jesus or God. But, you know, it kind of, you, you could kind of think about some friends that have these traits while you're reading it. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient. So, Amber is patient. Amber is not very patient. But we'll, we'll, you get the hint, okay? Um, love is patient. Love is kind. And it is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Look, uh, does not act unbecoming. It does not seek its own, right? Um, does not seek its own. It is not provoked. Does not take into account a wrong suffered, 
does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So when you think about that, and I'm not, you know, at, <laughs> at a certain point, um, we're, we're all going to kind of fail, <laughs> possibly fail our friends. But the point is that that's the kind of feeling I get when I spend time with my friends. You know, they're patient, they're kind, they do not insist on their own way. Um, sometimes it's like, oh, I want to do it this way, I want to do it that way. Ugh, okay, we'll do it your way, right? So anyway, those are my tips. Uh, wishing you love, light, positive, healthy chords, and guidance through the Holy Spirit.